Okay, I'm AJ, that's Andrew, that's Francois. We're all, well, we're developers and you're still a maintainer, right? Yeah. So how many people in this room are developers? Debian developers? And how many are Debian maintainers? We've got one. Um, and how many people have something, ha have, have a program that they think should be in Debian but isn't? Okay, so this is kind of you guys. Um, how many of those people were Debian developers? Yeah. <laughs> Um, uh, how many people work in Google is apparently a question someone wants to ask. <laughs> yeah, that, whatever. And how many people have uh, PPA in Ubuntu? Nobody, gosh, wow, okay. So basic philosophy of getting something into Debian, find some software, make it into a deb, upload it, yeah, profit, not so much, but whatever. Um, seriously, my indentation went away. Ah. Okay, so in all the rest of these slides, the top bullet point is meant to be what's happening and the rest of the bullet points are meant to be how it's happening. So if you want to package something, it's generally polite to talk to the upstream author and say, hey, I want to distribute your software to millions of people. Um, checking the license. You're in a Debian mini conference. I guess you're obsessive about free software and and license checking and stuff like that, or at least are familiar with people who are. <laughs> um, if not, talk to the person next to you. Sorry. Um, it's generally good if you're trying to package something to actually look through the compiler warnings it spits out or the warnings it spits out at runtime. If you're packaging something built for KDE or GNOME. Um, running the test suite, stuff like that. Good idea to do that stuff before shipping stuff to other people. Uh, it's rarer than you might hope. Um, packaging software has, has, how many people here have not ever actually packaged something as a deb? Um, have you ever tried? Okay, so it, it's not, so it might look hard or there's, if you try Googling, there are many, many, many pages of instructions. Um, it's, not, it's not as hard as it looks. If you try and do it perfectly, then it gets hard because there's kind of a long tail of bugs to fix or, or policy to comply with or, or little tweaks you can do to make packages better. Uh, what? Okay, so packaging, the first things you want to know about is Deb Helper and DH. Uh, make, make DH or make Deb Helper will basically take most packages and turn it into a Deb for you with, with almost zero effort. Um, you'll want to install things like Deb scripts and Dput. And if you install that package and have a look, and have a look what's in it and look at some of the man pages or the help, um, that'll give you a fairly good start. The developer's reference, Debian policy, good things to start reading eventually. Um, put it on your nightstand or something and read through a chapter um, as you go. Uh, I personally think they're quite readable, but your mileage may vary. Lint, once you've actually got a package, run it through Lintian, it'll complain at you, fix the bugs. Run it again, it'll complain some more, fix those. And once you've completed that cycle and it's not whinging, mostly people won't whinge either. And a lot of Debian folk are on IRC or mailing lists and it's fairly easy to ask for help there too. So once you've actually made the Deb, then you want to get it into Debian. So I don't know how many people have tried this or heard gossip about it, but that was my take on what you probably expect. So you get a, get a GPG key and then you get it into the web of trust by getting a billion people to sign it. Um, prove you can recite all those documents that I just told you about backwards. Um, I probably should have put in something like become a legal expert on the GPL and stuff. Um, then you put in an application and wait five or 10 or 20 years. Then you're a Debian developer and then you can do whatever you want, which mostly means go to conferences and not actually package stuff as far as I know. Uh, yeah, consider that all wrong if, if that was your 
that was your worry, then try and throw it out. Um, the the best approach is the is go through the Debian maintainer approach, um, which just means get a key, get it signed by a couple of people. Um, you can do that by the end of the day, if not the end of the week, or I mean that the other way around, I guess. Um, you have to agree. Sorry, yes. Why do we have a um, because we need a class hierarchy so that the aristocrats like you and I can live off the labor of the serfs. <laughs> Does that clear it up? <laughs> um, the real answer is because making, making things easier is, is, is hard because DDs have to be super smart for some reason. So, yeah. Politics is the, is the real answer probably. Um, yeah, you're welcome to propose a GR to get rid of the distinction, I don't know. Um, so this, this policy is basically how I got to be a DD back in the day, and the DD process has accreted rules and bureaucracy since then, for good and bad reasons, but um, yeah, so if, if, if you had a time machine and could go back to 97 or so, this would be your process to become a developer. Um, agree to the social con contract, um, agree to the Debian machine usage policy, i.e. I won't post spam from Debian machines, subscribe to the Debian Develop Announce list, um, get a DD to, to say that, yeah, you're a good person, you can code, you won't introduce crap into the archive. Again, you can do that here this week. Um, then the mechanical process is you file a bug in the bug tracking system, referencing all these things. And that will get you into the Debian maintainer's keyring, at which point a Debian developer can grant you access to help do uploads for whichever specific packages. So you can do. So if you can already make a package and you just want to get it into the archive, if you go through those steps this week, you're set. Uh, so yeah, the other, the other bits are, uh, if, if you want more help for stuff like this, then things to know about are alias accounts, um, the various subgroups that may be relevant, so Debian Perl, Debian Python, Debian Haskell, Debian Med, Debian Science, I think there's still a ham radio group. Um, there's the collab main group, which basically says, yeah, these packages are just maintained by everybody. Um, and there's a bunch of stuff like packages QA to help do QA analysis of, of Debian packages. Um, and those are some links. And I figured anyone who wants some questions, who's got a key that they want to get signed, is basically the rest of this, this session. So, questions? So the uh, collab main thing, when I tried to get a repository created for a couple of us to maintain a particular package, the Alioth maintainer said it's kind of a pain in the backside to get individual group things set up, so use collab maintenance and it'll be, all be fine. So while it's true that <coughs> it is meant to be committable by anybody, I think there are certainly formalisms around that. So rather than just jumping in there and committing something and uploading it like I was planning to do this afternoon, uh, you really should ask the, the people who are on the uploaders and the maintainers list. Mostly just because of it, it's convenient to have a single repository. What I'm not sure about with respect to the Debian maintainer thing is it is a separate key ring, but once the initial upload has been blessed, in theory, the, that person can continue to upload that same package without further oversight by the original developer? So that, that was the way it worked originally. Um, the way it works now is there is a separate database table that says which Debian maintainers have permission to upload which packages, and that's controlled by DCUT. So any DD can basically say, yes, this person can now upload this package or no, this person can no longer upload the package. So it sounds like Debian Maintainer is actually the correct solution for somebody who has one package that they care about deeply and they want to upload, but they don't want to be bothered with the rest of the fruit. 
Yeah, or a particular subset of packages they care about, yeah. Sure. So the other thing is that the Debian maintainer, being a Debian maintainer is basically considered a step on the way to being a Debian developer these days. Uh, just wondering if you had any advice about what to do if the upstream is uh, very unkeen on your packaging efforts. Um, uh, that depends in what way they're unkeen. Like it's free software, so you can just say screw them yeah. and do yeah, it, sure. right? Hmm. But that, that's not the best way if you kind of have some bugs and you'd then like their help to get those bugs fixed. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and uh, just uh, what is... Okay, so I've, I'm looking at some large Java libraries, uh, unfortunately, and there is a gigantic kind of trail of dependencies and dependencies for the dependencies. And, of course, there's test dependencies for the dependencies. So is there any kind of minimum level of usefulness? Or what's the kind of threshold for getting something to Debian? It's, is it, I mean, it seems to be rather kind of, if you're interested in it, then go ahead. But is there any... Uh, any more comments about that? You guys want to? Well, I, I, think, I think the threshold is basically um, that kind of an informal one, which is like if you're willing to maintain something in Debian, um, then you pretty much can. You know, you can upload it. But if, you can, if you're a DD, you can upload it. If you're, if, you're a, uh, if you're just, you know, random person in the community, then you need to convince the Debian developer to upload it for you. At that point, you can maintain it. Um, as long as you don't have too many uh, release critical bugs, well, any release critical bugs, and you fix them quickly, and uh, you know, like it's not it's not a, a big secure it's not a big burden on the security team, then you can pretty much maintain a package that only three people use. Um, that's like you know we we don't really. Yeah, um, you can host all your, you can build your devs uh, locally and host them locally without having to upload them to the archive. It's a, so that, that's particularly not a bad idea um, if you've got a whole bunch of dependencies. So you want to package OpenRocket and it's got a whole bunch of new Java dependencies every release. So you then have to package all those dependencies as well. And to actually make sure that those work, then you might as well do that all locally, set up your repository, rebuild stuff against the repository to make sure it builds, and then you can upload them all at once. Yeah, no, um, yeah, I've ended up packaging two, another two kind of Java testing frameworks, which I'm not sure how many Java testing frameworks Debian needs, but uh, all, anyway, all of them, yeah. <laughs> so if, if you look through the packages that are in Debian, you'll find things like Chiarch Utils, which, are, uh, which is some stuff that Ian Jackson and some of the guys in that run the Chiarch server in the UK happen to find useful and figure other people might find it useful too. I'm sure you can look through popularity contests and find some that only one person uses, or one person who runs popularity contests and reports uses. Um, it's not really very nice to upload something and then not maintain it when it starts getting RC bug reports or something later, so that's a limitation, but it's all pretty informal. Cool. Okay, thanks guys. Yeah, I was just going to add on that there's probably some, uh, as AJ just sent on, I guess there's some kind of social expectation that you will continue to maintain what you upload for at least a period of time. Otherwise, it's going to get dropped. Yeah, and, and, if, you, and if you don't, like, you know, the, the expectation is at the very least you'll, be, you'll orphan the package to make it explicit that you're no longer maintaining this thing. Like, there's a process for, for getting something into Debian and there's a process for signaling to the rest of the project that you have no interest in this package anymore and you want someone else to take it over um, or you just want to like you know rage quit the package <laughs> so as a segue on from that and this is just a hypothetical i haven't run into this in debian but i have on the cpan is uh, what do you do if uh, you want to help out on a package but the current maintainer or person in charge of it isn't being responsive or uh, doesn't 
yeah, it, maybe it's on its way to being orphaned, but how do you, what do you do if you can't work with the person? The, uh, the, well, so the first thing that, that I would say is, is try, to get, try to get in touch with the person. And like, some people will be unresponsive when you, when you ask them for help. But when you offer help, they become responsive. Like, especially, like, would you, do you need a new, uh, would you like to have a co-maintainer? And you know, I've picked up a few packages where a person was like, no, I'd like you to be the maintainer if you don't mind. And then it's like, sweet, you know, I, I want to fix this. Um, so that's, that's one thing, just you know, offer help to, to the person that's not responsive. If, if the person still doesn't respond, then um, basically what, what you want to do is there's a process called the MIA process of missing in action. And you can report that person as potentially missing in action. And then there's a team within Debian that will try to contact that person. And if it fails, they will orphan the package uh, for you. And then you can pick it up. Um, so, but the other thing you can do as well is uh, you can uh, do a non-maintainer upload in NMU. So if there's a bug that annoys you and it's not being fixed, you can't contact a person. While the MIA team is trying to get in touch with them, you can do a non-maintainer upload. Uh, which is basically like you get, a, you get a Debian developer to upload something and you tell the maintainer, here's the patch I applied, you create a new bug, here's the patch I applied to the package. Package has been uploaded into a special queue that, so that it will actually enter the archive in 10 days. If you disagree with this, feel free to block it. If you don't do anything in 10 days, it will, it will go through. So that, because miss, the missing in action process can take a little bit of time. So that, that's something you can do. Did you have something to add, Brandon? Or? No, I think you nailed it. <laughs> there are occasionally hostile takeovers, but they're not that common. The solution of contacting the maintainer and offering to help and perhaps being an uploader, I'm pretty sure will often end up with, uh, you can have it. I've certainly done that from the other end. Uh, somebody's been really keen to help on Debsums, for example, and I said, it's all yours. <laughs> Take it and run. Yeah, if, if, you're, if you're looking for packages, like you, you want to be involved in Debian and you don't know what to package, one good thing to look at is, is actually like what, what is it that you use that's not very well maintained. Like maybe, you know, like the, there's this particular tool that, uh, has, that, that has had like five new upstream versions that haven't been packaged. And so you can like, oh, that's interesting. And you can try and get in contact with a person. And, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of likely that you'll end up the maintainer if you, if you ask nicely and, you know, the person doesn't have any interest in it anymore. Um. Along those lines, also checking the uh, list of packages that are, have either been orphaned or up for adoption to see if there's anything you actually care about. Um, it might be worth picking up. Otherwise, they might not be in the next release. And there's a tool in Debian called, uh, I think it's part of the dev scripts packages, called uh, WNPP-alert. Uh, and what, what that is, WNPP is uh, work needed in prospective packages. So it's a, it's a special meta bug within Debian that keeps track of packages that have an orphan, that, re that need help, and that, those sorts of things. Um, so that tool, if you run it, it will show you of the things that you have installed on your system, which ones have been orphaned, uh, which ones need a new maintainer, those kinds of things. So that's a really good start. Like I've picked up a whole bunch of packages myself because I, I have this running as a cron job uh, on my machine so that like every, whenever there's a new package that gets orphaned that I use because it's installed on my system, then I'll get a notification. Uh, like I'll get, I'll, uh, the cron job will tell me and then um, I can look into if, uh, either adopting their package or the very least, at the very least subscribe to that bug where it was orphaned to make sure to keep, keep an eye on it and make sure that it actually gets picked up by someone at some point. How many people here have not filed a bug against Debian? Not filed a bug against Debian? Um, and how many of those people have not experienced a bug in Debian? <laughs> okay, so you should be able to you should be able to file those you should file those bug reports when you actually hit them. Um, I assume everyone here, because you're at LCA, is kind of smart and knows how to help debug problems and do sysadmin tasks and maybe compile programs and whatever, because that's that's really all it takes to contribute is like file a bug, help debug it help produce a patch that, that resolves it or, or makes it better in some way. Um, 
filing bugs, getting patches, that's like the first step in getting getting stuff into Debian. Yeah. Um, just on on the bugs, if if you discover a bug and you're it's quite clear to you that it's a bug in the package itself, not in the sorry, a bug in the software itself, not in the packaging of the software. Um, do you prefer if it's just handled upstream? Do you prefer if it's submitted in both? Um, it depends a lot on the package maintainer. Um, the the bug tracking the debugs bug tracking system in Debian um, has a feature to let you forward bugs upstream so that you file it in Debian, you forward it upstream, upstream fixes it. Depending on how how on what bug tracker they use, it might even get tracked back down to Debian when that bug's closed upstream. Um, being a, so if if it's I don't like the way the GUI is put together on this program, then that's probably something you might as well just keep upstream. But I don't think there's any rules on saying no, this is an upstream only bug. Don't file it in Debian ever. Yeah, I think I think the, the, the observation you made that it depends on the package maintainer is yeah. is, is quite true. Like there's some there's, for some packages, the maintainers will be heavily modifying the upstream source for whatever reason. Um, you know, ideally we try to avoid that, but sometimes it's inevitable. Um, and, uh, and in those cases, you're probably better off, if, if the Debian version is heavily patched, you're probably better off submitting the bug via Debian because it could be one of those patches, right? But on the other hand, if you actually get the source on upstream, test it out, see that it has your bug, then you, know, you may as well file the bug upstream. And, uh, and what you can do as well is you can file a bug upstream and then file a bug in Debian market as forwarded upstream. That way it's tracked in both places. Um, especially if you have a patch for it, then you know, go for it and file it upstream directly, right? Like it's because uh, the maintainer is going to have to do that work anyways. The other interesting point along those lines is that if it's an active, if it's a project which is reasonably dead upstream, then often it's more active in Debian for being having, having bug fixes done within it. And there's been a few packages where the Debian project has ended up adopting that those packages and be, effectively become the upstream. So. Again, depending on what the package is, if upstream is pretty much dead, then the Debian bug tracker is probably the right, best place to put it. Yeah, one, one of my upstream is actually uh, hosted on GeoCities. <laughs> uh, is there any rhyme or reason to the uh, new upload queue? It, just looking at the packages going into and out of the new queue, I don't know, some of them seem to have been there for literally years. and. Uh, Sometimes it takes a week, sometimes it takes a day. Is there any? Yes, there is rhyme or reason to it. Probably more rhyme than reason. Um, so library packages will tend to go through fairly quickly. Ones where there's no complicated licensing stuff will tend to go through pretty quickly. Um, stuff where the licensing is hard, like one file says it's licensed under this license and another one says it's licensed under the other license and they're not the same. Or when your Debian copyright notice says these are the licenses and the, the C files disagree. Um, all of those will cause either rejections or delays. Um, I wouldn't have thought there was any, so there's a freeze on at the moment that causes delays. Um, stuff gets prioritized within the, within the new queue, so if something's needed to fix an RC bug, then that'll tend to go through quicker. Uh, as far as I know, it's going reasonably well at the moment, so I would have thought anything that was over a couple... When did the freeze start? Start of December or November? Yeah, so anything that's more than two and a half months or so, that probably means that there was something really odd about the packaging. Like, it might be that the license is really clear, but it's not clear if that's actually open source or not because it's some some funny one, or there might be some patent patent stuff about it. So new checks of when when things get thoroughly reviewed by a third party, basically. So the FTP masters check the licenses and check the packaging. It's not completely crap. Um, and if there's if it's if it's clearly crap, then that's easy. It just gets rejected. If it's clearly fine, that's easy. It gets accepted. But if it's somewhere in the middle, then it gets left in the queue to yeah, I guess to make a decision. I guess there's not much visibility from your point of view unless you 
email someone about it. You just get to see it's in the queue and how long. That's all the information you have. It. Um, yeah, ask. You can ask the FTP masters what's what's going on. Um, I think they usually actually ping the maintainer who um, uploaded it if there's questions or whatever. But if they if they don't, then yeah, you should definitely ping them. Cool. It's it's the people watching from the sidelines who don't have any idea what's going on. <laughs> okay, thanks. Yeah, because because often they will um, like. You, you get a lot of information when they reject your, your upload yeah. because then it will come with like it failed these checks and you know like you need to fix this licensing thing or whatever. But yeah, you don't have a lot of feedback while it's waiting in the queue. Uh, my experience is that it hasn't been, it hasn't taken that long recently. Like a couple of years ago it, it used to take like, it could take like a, like a month or two or sometimes more to, to get something through because the FTP master team was, was uh, what was not very many people, um, but now they have FTP assistants um, that help out uh, reviewing these things. So. I guess one thing I'll just say is that uh, you know, I went through the DB maintainer process and it was incredibly painless. So if you are thinking about trying to upload, have a package that you would like to get, or some packages you want to get into DBN, don't be, don't be scared of it. Um, it really is pretty straightforward. Um, my sponsor, who is this guy here, uh, did come back with some feedback on, on my packaging, but uh, it was all pretty trivial stuff to fix up. So um, yeah, don't be afraid of it. I certainly recommend it, and I see it as a, a step towards becoming a DD, which I will do at some point in time. <laughs> Yeah, and in fact, you don't have to, um, if you want to get involved in Debian, you don't actually have to, to apply for any of these sort of official titles. If you want to just maintain a package in Debian, there's lots of people that do that. Like, there's a bunch of, um, of upstream developers that, um, that, use, that happen to use Debian, and they want to package their, their own software in Debian. They want to be responsible for it because it's easier. They get all the bug reports themselves, and they can fix it. And, uh, and you know, the... They have no interest in packaging anything else, but they're quite happy. I've, I've got a, I, I sponsor a couple of those um, upstream developers that package their own stuff in Debian. They're quite happy doing all of the packaging work for their own stuff. They have no intention of every, ever becoming a, a Debian a DM, Debian maintainer, or DD. Um, but you know, they get a really easy way to get into Debian. You just need to find uh, someone who, like a, a, a Debian developer, that's willing to sponsor your your uploads. So if you're not familiar with what sponsored uploads mean, it basically means that um, you do all the work of actually doing the packaging and then you find a Debian developer to upload it and they get all the credit. <laughs> the, the other thing to point out is that whilst we're talking about getting packages in Debian, Debian isn't all about packaging and the packages that are in there. You can also get involved with things like documentation, uh, QA, uh, triaging the bug system, uh, there's huge amounts of other areas of work in, you know, that Debian needs to have done that people can do within it, that if you know, packaging or maintaining software isn't your thing, then that's not the only way to get involved. Uh, there's probably a metric shitload of other tasks that could be done by people uh, that people definitely want help on. So. Yeah, for, ex for example, if you're, um, if, if you're really... Um, into uh, like licensing stuff, um, <clears throat> then um, you know you can uh, you, you can volunteer. Um, you know, so it's, I'm, I'm sure something like that Robert Collins would be really into. But you can volunteer to be an FTP master assistant or something like that to do this this these uh, checks and help out uh, help reduce the new queue. Um, if you're into other things, then you know you can find different teams within Debian that. Uh, that you can contribute to. Some people get started with, um, with something that uh, AJ mentioned earlier, the, the little packaging teams on Alioth, where uh, you don't have to have access to the archive. You don't have to be a DD, you don't have to be a DM. Um, all you need to do is to be interested in, say, you know, Perl packages or Python packages in Debian, and then you'll get access to a Git repo where the, the work is done, and you can contribute to that. There's a mailing list. Um, and then some people uh, will 
we will sort of you know move from there to uh, becoming Debian maintainers, um, or not. You know, sometimes they just care about you know the quality of uh, of uh, CPAN modules in Debian. So it's an easy way to get started. Are there any other questions about any of this kind of stuff, or uh, even other generic questions around Debian that people got? I guess I have a question. Has anybody <laughs> ever uh, run into problems? Like, has, has anybody uh, wanted to get involved in Debian and ran into problems where, like, you know, they hit a roadblock, they couldn't find a sponsor for their package, or anything like that? Only. Only from the perspective of reading what's involved and, and basically just getting scared off at the pass. Um, so what in particular was, was scary? Honestly, it was the, the time commitment involved in getting involved in Debian beyond... So I, I, I'm far more in the camp of there's a few things I care about, um, but... I, I don't really want to commit um, to, to, to the Debian political sphere. Um, so when I looked at what was involved, it, um, it, it seemed to be, um, you know, take two years of your life and, and deposit your soul here um, sort of process. Um, and it, it, just, it just looked like far too much work, to be perfectly honest. Yeah, I mean, I think that's what AJ was talking about when he said, you know, you have to like get your key signed by 50 DDs and then uh, and then wait five years and uh, do a couple uh, recite policy backwards. Yeah. Um, I I think, you know, if you if if your goal is if if you think of being in Debian as like being a Debian developer, like yeah, okay, so like if you start if you have never done any Debian work and you want to be a DD. Um, you know, like there's a few intermediate steps, um, but being involved in Debian is not necessarily about being a Debian developer. Like that's like if you really care about a project and you want to increase your involvement, um, it's it's not that's not the way that people first get involved in Debian. Like if you if you're using Debian on your machines and you run to bugs, like submitting a patch to the to submit a, submitting a bug in the first place is extremely helpful because. So especially if you have a workaround or something like that, right? Um, but even if you don't, just exposing a bug is, is really useful. Then, you know, the next level up is kind of fixing it, submitting a patch. Um, then you can get involved and do sort of, you know, little drive-by contributions by doing like a non-maintainer upload. Um, if you find, you know, you, you need to find a sponsor, but like if you find a package that's not being maintained very well in Debian, you can fix some bugs that way. And that doesn't mean you have to take over the the maintenance of the package, right? It just means that, you, that you're that you doing this one upload to fix a bug, and that's really useful. Um, I, I fixed a couple, for example, in the in the Jesse release cycle, done a couple of NMUs to clean up a few things before the release to make sure that Jesse, uh, those packages actually work in Jesse. Um, then you have other things where, you know, you can um, be a co-maintainer for a package, so that means that you're not the only one responsible for a package. You can help out the, the other maintainer. Um, so there's lots of ways to get involved in, in sort of small doses. Um, and also the other thing is, you know, if you, if you take over a package that almost never gets updated, uh, I've got a couple where like, well, I've got my GeoCDs one where like, you know, obviously the upstream is pretty much dead because the GeoCDs doesn't exist anymore. Um, so that never gets any new update, new upstream versions, right? All I have to do to keep that package in Debian is to, you know, fix the occasional bug, but the code doesn't change, so there's not that many bugs that, that get reported. Um, and just keep it, keep up the, the packaging stuff. So, you know, like I probably do an up, one upload every year to that package. That's a very low maintenance, and that's I'm the, the primary maintainer, the only maintainer for that package. So the amount of work that you do on a package varies immensely from, from one to the other. Uh, even when you're the, the maintainer. So that, that list of things up there to become a Debian maintainer or up there, whichever. Um, are you able to do all those this week if you're still interested? No, no I think so. 
Because, I mean, that's the sort of time frame that should take. I, some people can take much longer. I don't know if um, Eric or uh, Tom Marble might be watching this on the video once it's up, but they can take years just getting those steps done just because they're lazy, basically. But it really shouldn't take any time. There was another question up the. Well, there's another question over the side now. We have time for one last question, then it's lunchtime. Mm, lunchtime. Uh, it was just about, uh, you're asking for friction points, and one friction point I have is just the documentation on the Debian website. And I understand documentation's hard, but there's a lot of orphan pages, there's a lot of how-to guides that are missing the, the juicy bit of detail. They'll have the very overview, but they won't have the, the steps where you actually need help. Um, and I, it's just something I wanted, to, I wanted to highlight as an issue I have is trying to find my way through the Debian website to find that bit of information. Like the other day I tried to find where to download the Jesse Beta installer and it took me through like seven or eight pages and I ended up going to a seat to the archive and chopping off bits to find out that. So. It's a recent thing and the problem is probably a lot more useful because they would be Fair enough, fair enough. Um, but there's a lot of orphaned documentation I find, or on the website. On the website, um, the mailing list may be a better way of, of doing it. Uh, I'm just used to googling for stuff, so hence I'm more a browser help finder. Um, I just want to point that out as a point of friction. Yeah. Um, and I understand documentation's hard. And it's really yeah, I mean, hard. I have the same point of friction. Like finding stuff on the wiki that thoroughly documents what I'm interested in is hard. That's The, the other thing as well is, like on the wiki, is finding some of that information there may be out of date as well. So you do have to sort out you know, some of the wheat from the chef. Uh, I find searching for stuff using your favourite search engine is um, usually a pretty good way. I, I typically find the information. You, got, you may have to sort through a few different hits to, to get what you actually need. But I, I tend to find it usually pretty good. Um, but yes, digging out some of the obscure commands or how to do that particular thing you need to do in your package can be tricky. Um, oh, I've just found that there's been a couple of times where someone started on a page and it's clear that we've decided to, and it's, it's a long page, there's lots of stuff in it, then you get to the page where it does Well, a lot of that stuff's on a wiki, so once you actually do search the mailing list and find the answer, you put it, put the answer in the to-be-done part, right? <laughs> Plus one. <laughs> okay, uh, lunch time. We're now out of time. Um, thank you, my uh, fellow panelists, for uh, assisting with this. Um, lunch time. We're back here at twenty past one. Thanks, guys.